put honey on your toast or in your smoothie. Take a second to think of how it's made. We went to an apiary in South Deerfield, Warm Colors Apiary, and talked with Dan and Benita, the owners. Dan, thank you so much for inviting us here. Well, Seth, we're pleased to be a part of it. Now, tell us a little bit about the apiary. Well, we, uh, we've been in business for about 12 years. We run about 1,000 colonies for honey production. Well, Dan, let's go beekeeping. All right. We donned our protective masks and we headed into the apiary. Each box that you see here holds thousands of busy bees, but they don't like to be disturbed, as you probably could have guessed. So we need to use smoke to disrupt their ability to communicate about us encroaching on their territory. Dan opened up one of the hives to let us know how honey is made. The bees basically they take they make honey out of nectar from plants. Uh, plants uh, have evolved to put out flowers. Contrary to what people think, flowers are not about people; they're about attracting pollinators. And what they do is they would go and the the, the flowers would have nectar areas in them that produce a sugary solution, and the bees gather that. It's primarily sucrose. They put enzymes in this sucrose, which converts it to glucose and fructose, which is why the human body can absorb it easily. It's a long process. The bees start by scouting every morning to see what flowers are in bloom. Uh, then they come back and they do uh, something called the waggle dance or the round dance and they get on the frames and they shake and vibrate and according to where the sun is they instruct the bees in the hive to go find a flower patch and then all the bees will fly out and uh, harvest that patch and then when it's ready they will put a thin coating of wax over to seal it into the cells. What makes it really interesting is that of course there's a lot to what bees do. They have certain plants they prefer uh, of course, us, us humans, we like them because they, they pollinate our apples and a lot of fruits and berries, nuts, a lot of the vegetables. So these are hatching. There's a bee hatching out right there. And you can tell there's, there's another one over here. So, so the, all of these are at the right age to hatch. So these will probably all be out by tomorrow morning. Once the bees have created a sufficient amount of honeycombs, what's the next step for you in the process? Ah, the harvesting. Well, what we would do is we would take the comb that has cat, it's all capped, which tells us it's ripe. We would uncap those cappings on that honey, exposing it, and we'd put it in a centrifuge, which is just a, a, a round container that spins, and the honey spins out, call this a honey extractor, and it would flow down the sides and down to the bottom, and then we'd run it through some, some, uh, some, some sieves, we call it, which are just stainless steel uh, mesh that collects the chunks of wax and things, and the honey would drain into that. Now, bees help us make honey, and they also help us make wax. Do you mind describing that process and yeah. where bees' wax comes from? Well, the bees' wax is actually grown on the bee's body, on their abdomen. They have a set of glands underneath that they grow little pieces of wax, and they will take those pieces of wax, and with their mandibles, their mouth parts, they will shape that wax into the cells that you see. So they would, they would take their mouth parts and they would shape this wax and all bees are born with the ability to do this and they make these really very perfect cells out of wax. Now that wax from our, our use, when we harvest the honey, we cut that wax off the top and we drain that out and then we would melt that down later on and we make it into candles. Dan's wife, Benita, makes all of the wax candles, and she told us more about honey and how it's used. You want to taste light to dark so that you can understand the subtleties of the lighter one, um, and so that you, that's how you would, you would do it. Honey is wonderful by itself, but it's great in yogurt. I make my own granola. Uh, there's a lot of recipes. Honey.com has a lot of recipes. Now, that one... Should, really good. Should taste a little stronger, maybe. Yeah. It's because we're getting darker. It's, what are some of the medicinal uses for honey? Honey is a wonderful medicinal use. Um, it it helps uh, heal if you have any kind of skin burns or scratches. Put some honey on it. Um, it's on on the skin. It gives off just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, and it's an it's an antibacterial healer. So the next time you reach for a jar of honey for your smoothie or for your tea, just remember how difficult it is to make this sweet treat.